Hey guys, ever wondered how to make flat and boring footage like this? Look epic and cinematic like this? Well, then you're in luck, because today I will talk about color grading. Color grading is the process of creatively altering the look and feel of your footage to give it the desired emotional impact. For example, take this innocent and harmless clip of water cutting some fresh tomatoes for his breakfast. Friendly, right? But if we just change the look of the footage and maybe add some dramatic music, it's like a scene right out of a murder movie. I get to wake up to that every morning. Note that this tutorial is a follow-up to my color correction tutorial, which you can check out by clicking this link right here. It is important that you first understand how to correct any color issues with your footage before you move on to color grading. Color grading a piece of footage that hasn't been corrected is kind of like putting fresh paint on your walls without a proper undercoat. This is going to be a fairly basic tutorial and while I will use Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere for the color grading, you can really apply the same techniques no matter which video editing or video compositing software you use, as long as it allows you to change the color of your footage and maybe apply some creative effects. But enough of me standing here talking, let's jump right into the tutorial. Here I have the short sequence from the Zombie Hunter VFX short film that we color corrected in the last part of this tutorial. Note that I still have the effects we use for the color correction applied to these clips. But now let's focus on color grading this footage to make it look more cinematic. In Adobe After Effects and Premiere, to manage your color grading effects, I recommend placing all of them in a separate adjustment layer. This will allow you to easily tweak the intensity of the grading or turn it on and off entirely for all of the clips in the composition. Create a new adjustment layer by going to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. I am going to call this new layer Color Grading. I have a separate tutorial on adjustment layers that you can check out to learn more about what they are for and how to use them. If you are working with software where you don't have adjustment layers, simply apply the color grading effects to the clips. In this tutorial I will take you through how I color graded the footage for our Zombie Hunter VFX short film as well as one other example. But just keep in mind that you can change the settings, the effects and anything else you like to suit what you are looking for when working on your own projects. Also note that color grading can technically, in quotation marks, break your color correction again, but that's alright. Correcting the footage first ensures that we have the best possible starting point for when we get into color grading. Now let's get started. First off, I want the footage to look a little rougher, so let's add a curves effect to the layer to increase the contrast. Search for the curves effect and apply it to the layer. In the RGB channel, add one point in the upper third of the curve and push it up a little. This will brighten the highlights in your footage. Then add another point on the lower end of the curve and push it downwards. This will darken the shadows some more. Cool, that looks more dramatic already. I also want my footage to look a little bit more sullen and dark and prepare it for receiving a new color tint altogether. Search for the hue and saturation effect and apply it to the layer. Then bring down the master saturation by about 20% to drain a little bit of color from the image and make it look colder. Cool. I think I want to bring the midtones up a little bit more again. It's gotten a little bit too dark for my liking. While we could go back and tweak the contrast curve we added earlier, let's just add a new levels effect instead. Search for and apply the levels effect to the adjustment layer. I tend to prefer layering multiple effects with small changes for color grading, so I can easily disable part of my grading pipeline. Now bring up the midtones in the image by dragging the little triangle in the middle of the histogram towards the left. Yeah, about here seems good. We now have three separate effects applied to our color grading adjustment layer. Again, if you don't have adjustment layers, you probably just have these effects sitting on your clip. In After Effects and in Premiere, the adjustment layer simply ensures that the color grading is applied to all of the clips in your composition that sit below it and it allows you to easily enable or disable all of the effects at once. Next, let's start tweaking the color to move away from the plain look into a more underworld style blue-greenish look that is a little bit more surreal and unusual. As you already know, for any changes to the color of my clips, I just love using the curves effect. So search for and apply another curves effect to your color grading adjustment layer. Then go over to the red channel. Add some contrast into the red channel by raising the upper end and lowering the bottom end of the curve. Since we are tweaking an individual color channel here, this will start to introduce actual color changes to our footage. We will now see a lot more red in the highlights of our clip and in the shadows we will see less red turning the dark arrow cyan. Let's also increase the intensity of the green tint, so hop over to the green channel. 
add a small bump to the middle of the curve. I'm going to add two points on either side of the center so the change only affects the midtones of the footage. This is starting to look quite cool. Just to keep things a bit more varied, let's also add a little bit more blue into the shadows of the image, so go over to the blue channel. I will add a little bump at the bottom end of the curve to make the dark areas a little bit more blue. Again, I added one point just above that to keep the rest of the curve as unchanged as possible. Now check out the difference the curves effect makes to our footage. It's quite a dramatic change and while we're not quite there yet, it's starting to look a lot more cinematic. Let's scrub through our footage and check out what we got. One thing I'm noticing is that the highlights are a little bit too red for my liking. To fix that, simply go back to the curves effect and select the red channel. Bring the highlights back down to drain the red color from the bright areas of the footage. Now this I like better, but I think I'll also add some blue into the highlights instead. So return to the blue channel and bump up the upper end of the curve. This will add a nice little blue highlight into the footage. Let's scrub through our composition to see what we got. Looking good. Check out how the footage looked without all of the color grading effects. And here's our graded version. Certainly quite a stylistic change and much more of a movie feel. Finally, because I think it suits the dark feel of the Zombie Hunter VFX movie, let's add a vignette to the footage. To add a vignette, first create a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid. Obviously I will call this layer Vignette, make sure it is solid black and then hit OK. Now select the ellipse tool from the toolbar and draw a large mask around the center of the screen. This will add a big black ellipse right in the middle of the footage. Open up the mask settings on the vignette layer. To invert the mask, simply change the mode of the mask to subtract. This will cut the mask contents out of the black solid we created and we can start to see the vignette taking shape. But of course, right now the edges of the mask are much too harsh. To fix this, simply increase the mask feather to something large like 2 or 300. I will also increase the mask expansion property a fair bit to push the edges of the vignette further out. I don't want the black to reach too far into the clip and start obscuring my actual shot. I just want to add a little bit around the edges. Tweak the mask feather and mask expansion properties to your liking. Now you could be perfectly content with what you got, but I often like to set the blend mode for my vignette layers to classic color burn. This will blend the dark corners in a more interesting way with the underlying footage. But now the vignette effect is a little bit too strong. Simply soften it up by lowering the opacity property of the vignette solid layer to around 50%. That looks much better. Let's play back our color graded clip and see what we've got. I'm pretty happy with this, but remember it's entirely up to you how you want your footage to look. Let us pick up the pace a little bit and let me take you through a totally different color grading example. Here I have a clip from our last visual effects short film, Mario's Magic Mushroom. It is the clip of Fat Mario getting off the couch to reach for the mushroom. We already color corrected this footage, so let's move on to the color grading. I want to give the image a thick, warm, yellow look and add some glow on top to enhance the feeling of Mario being a little bit spaced out. Again, create a new adjustment layer by going to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. As before, rename the layer to Color Grading. Let's first tweak the brightness and the color, so apply your favorite curves effect to the adjustment layer. Brighten up the clip considerably by pushing up the upper middle of the curve. Now this might actually blow out some of the highlights, but when it comes to color grading there are no hard rules, as long as you actually like the look you are creating. Now hop over to the red channel and increase it by a fair bit to tint the footage red. Then hop over to the green channel of the curves effect and do the same. Adding green on top of red will give our clip that warm yellow tint we are after. Let's have a quick look at the impact our color grading effects have on the footage by disabling and enabling the color grading adjustment layer. I'd say it's a good starting point. Note that for color grading you're not limited to using simple color adjustments. You can be as creative as you want. So let's get creative and add some glow to only the highlights of the footage. First duplicate the base footage layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D on your keyboard. I will rename this copy to Mario Glow. I will also quickly collapse all of the color correction effects that are applied to the layer. We don't need to worry about them for now. To isolate the highlights, apply a simple brightness and contrast effect to the layer. Jack the contrast up to almost 100% and then lower the brightness drastically until you are left with only the bright areas of your footage. This should do. To add a glow, search for the CC radial fast blur effect and apply it to the Mario Glow layer. This effect will create a radial blur shooting out of the center position, creating interesting streaks of light. Tweak the amount of the CC radial fast blur effect until you have a fairly strong glow effect going on. 
maybe around 90. And now to blend the glow layer together with our underlying footage, simply set the blend mode of the Mario glow layer to add. Voila! We now have streaks of light shooting out from only the highlights of our footage, giving the image a rather surreal look. Of course you can disable the glow layer if you don't like it or tweak its opacity or the effects on it. I simply wanted to demonstrate that you can be as creative as you want when it comes to color grading to achieve the look that you are after. Let's play back our color corrected and color graded clip of Fat Mario getting off the couch. Now go get that mushroom. And that's it. With that you should have everything you need to properly correct and grade your footage to make it look as bright or dark, warm or cold, friendly or terrifying as you want it to. Remember, color grading is not an exact science. It's all about being creative and finding that look that perfectly suits your video and the feeling that you're trying to convey. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the section below. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And if you're hungry for more, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.